Hey guys, Luke here from Flux Kitesurfing. and welcome to this video. This is the final video for the series on how you can build your own hydrofoil board from home. And in this video, we're gonna give it the riding test. So it's ready to fly, we're gonna get it on the water, give it a test, see how it performs. So in this video, we'll talk about my first impressions first, then the design and performance, and then some of the ideas that I might be taking to my next board. So any changes that I might like to make in the next board. And so then you might be able to maybe implement some of those changes if you're following the series on how to build your own board at home for yourself. So let's get into it. So first off, let's talk about my first impressions. I'm actually making this video about three weeks after completing the board. So I've already been riding it for about three weeks now. But when I first got it on the water, what it was immediately noticeable to me was how buoyant it was and how stable it was. I was able just to stand on the board completely, hands-free with nothing in my hand, very easy to paddle around, lots of buoyancy, easy enough to maneuver and I thought this is going to be great. Then, because I'm new to para winging, it took me a little bit, there was quite the learning curve to be able to actually get it up and fly. So it took me a little while to actually get going on the board, about three sessions before I could even fly on hydrofoil. But then since then, I've been putting it to the test, getting it out there and really putting it through its paces while I'm learning how to power wing which of course is actually harder on the equipment than if I already knew how to do it. The overall size of the board was working fine so the length and the width, the width while it's narrower than a normal stand-up paddle board I found still offered plenty of stability because not only do we have all of that buoyancy but we also have the mast and the foil underneath the water which really helps with that side to side stability. The length was plenty of length as well easier to get up on plane and with that with the thickness, there was so much buoyancy, it was really easy to stay well above the water, so no problems with that. And then as time has gone on, and I've gotten a little bit better with the power wing, so I can focus less on the power wing and more on how the board is performing, I've sort of been able to stand on it more comfortably, carve around, cruise around. When I crash, it's easy to get back on. Plenty of buoyancy, sit there, relaunch the power wing, take off again, water launching has been well, the way it's been planing has been good, the water release seems fine. You know, everything about it feels like a comfortable size that's easy enough to ride, easy enough to learn on, durable enough, and so overall, I'm really happy with the build. One of the things that really stood out to me was the track positioning worked really well. The board was very balanced. I was able to hold it by the front wing and the entire board was balanced really nicely. I found that the track positioning didn't play a huge role in moving my foil back and forth because it's a strapless board. Really anywhere in this area worked really well. The durability of the board has held up really well. I've really put it through its paces. I've been smacking it into the bottom. I've been smacking it into kelp at full speed, having like dead stop crashes. Absolutely no dramas with any of that. When I'm coming in, I'm holding the power wing because it's all rocky bottom here. You know, the board's hitting on the bottom, the nose is picking into rocks. I'm sort of laying it on its side and so it's really held up. So as far as durability with the fiberglass layup, that's worked really well. And particularly the patch that we put on the tail and the nose has been really important because that has been getting hammered by the rocks when I'm sort of getting entering and exiting the water. Let's talk about what I would improve for next time. I think, and this is advice that everyone told me at the very start is with your beginner board, you're only gonna to wanna to ride it for a few weeks, if that, and then you're going to be ready for something that is smaller and lighter and that is definitely standing true for me already. While I'm still happy to be riding this board, I can already feel that I would benefit from something a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, a little more maneuverable and a little more playful. And so now that I've ridden it for a while, I've sort of come to terms with the fact that this is not gonna be a crossover between a downwinder and a para wing board. The para wing, now that I've learned it, has a huge amount of energy, right? Now, you, of course, it's all about how the size of the wing that you're riding for the amount of wind that you have, of course, but you can generate quite a lot of pull and it will pull me out of the water on a board smaller than this. Now, for me, again, still in the beginner stages, I want enough board that I can comfortably paddle in. If we run out of wind and I'm way out there in the middle of the strait somewhere, I want to be able to paddle in comfortably. And so I wouldn't go any less than 80 liters, but I think my next board, that's the, my target. My target will be around about that 80 liters. And the way that I'll do it is pretty much just cut off the nose, right? Just take, you know, seven, eight, 10, 12 inches straight off the nose. That's gonna reduce the weight and the length. It's gonna make it feel a little bit more maneuverable. Speaking of the weight, the board's come in at around about eight kilograms, about 8.3 kilograms, and that's heavier than my target and it's heavier than a production board of this size. And so I think that's one of the sort of disadvantages with using the fiberglass, of course, that's 
common knowledge that carbon offers you a lighter weight for the same strength but it was an easy layup and so it depends how you're going to be building your board if you want to vacuum bag it with carbon you'll probably end up with a lighter board with the same amount of strength but i'm still happy with using fiberglass i really enjoy using fiberglass and in the next boards i'm going to use fiberglass as well but i am going to do a couple of things to reduce the weight first off we're going to make it smaller that's going to reduce the weight just uh, as simple as that secondly i think i'd make some changes to the stringer design and to the foil box mount this has been very durable like i said this area has come under a huge amount of stress when i keep crashing into everything no cracks no absolutely no sign of any uh, problems whatsoever and but what i could do i think with my next board is just reduce the width of these oversized stringers they don't need to be this this is sort of you know for fun um so i'll probably bring them down to about four or five millimeters if you're going to be making a board following this video series i'll probably machine them down that's going to save about 500 grams just doing that alone then you could use a high density foam block instead of the wooden core block or you could use a thinner block that is that you actually just route a track through so it goes into the foam underneath that i think that that would also be sufficient and if i was sort of um constrained by the the width of my foam so i laid up the two pieces of foam if you remember to make this width for the stringers however it would make better sense if you have the option to cut the size of the foam that you want which i could have of course these cut these down but anyway you could bring the stringer in so it's in line with directly underneath the track that makes a lot of sense and by doing so and this is something that i want to experiment with my next board by doing so i'd really like to have the stringer directly under the track and really try and remove even a lot of the box even the ribs by just having the these the tracks directly routed into the stringer now that would be a little bit experimental but i think that that would reduce a lot of weight in this area and still maintain a lot of strength and a lot of direct connection through the stringer up to the deck creating a lot of stiffness as well even with those changes and the fact that i want to go to a smaller board now i'm still really happy that i made this board because i could actually just sup foil this board in surf that's it that's how stable it feels when i'm on it and it served its purpose really well as a beginner board for me and maybe my friends or anyone else that wants to give it a go you know around here so it's great to have plus of course it rides really nicely so i'm going to continue using it until i make another board but i just wanted to let you know scenes if you're making your board and maybe if you're already slightly more experienced that uh, if you're doing power wing in a wing you'd probably be able to research the size that would suit you best but i would probably come down a little bit in size on this one and i'll change those couple of uh, make those couple of changes just to reduce some of the weight as well other than that though guys i'm really stoked it was a good project the board works i've been riding it i've been having a good time i've learned how to power wing on this board and it was really a cost effective way <clears throat> it was a really cost effective way to make a board so that is it for this video series and hopefully uh, if you guys make your own, please let me know. I'm always stoked to hear how people's other builds are going and if you make any changes and how you do that, put that in the comments as well and let other people know that might be building their boards, how you've done it as that might be you know, preferred methods. So like I said, that is it for the entire video series. Really long video series. So thanks for watching it all the way to the end. I know there's so much information in these videos and so they're quite dry and, and long, but hopefully if you're new to this and you're looking for that real step-by-step -step guide, then it helps you. So that is it. Okay, so lots more videos coming. I've got new kite surfing videos. I'm gonna be building the next hydrofoil. I've just built a new strapless kite board, so lots more. So stay tuned for that, and I hope to see you in those coming videos. Thanks again, guys. Luke here, I'll see you in the next one.